What would you do with a brain if you had one? Do? Why, if I had a brain, I could... I'm a sin eater. I, 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 I can read and at times remove sins. That's all. No, that's not all. You listen very carefully. A mortal soul has no place in the realm of the dead. Your life could be in danger. I will have to put it in danger. I understand the risks. <laughs> no, don't. Our lives are a tapestry in which moment is a thread on which the next thread is woven. When you reach beyond this existence, as you are about to, a tempting fate, this will frighten you. This is the end. As I begin, you must not stop me. Give me the thread. If you have any doubt now, would you have time to make your exit? This is the end. The president is the chief executive officer of this corporation called the United States of America. Fuck you, Sally. America's not a country. It's just the United States government is a corporation called New York City. Christ, if you read Matthew, the book of Matthew, it's very clear, right? That's what Jesus stated, that the Jewish prophets prophesied until John the Baptist came. Jesus, which is a title, not a name, Iusus, all right, is the son of man, St. John is John the Christ. You get it? Okay. All right. So, because Jesus is Emmanuel, as you know, it's really, really easy. Now, the first part of Revelations is talking about John meeting what he would call God, right? He's having a vision, right? He's doing a little game, heavy-duty game theory with some ayahuasca. <laughs> I don't know, but anyway... Uh, one one the revelation of Jesus Christ, which, as we know, Jesus was not the Christ. The Christ being a Jewish title, okay, Christos, which God gave unto him to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, okay. So anyway, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw? John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Okay. Now, you'll notice this is not really, par this is, no parable or metaphor at all, allegory or anything. It's really clear. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. Now you look at Corinthians, and when you read Corinthians 15, what is it, 52 to 57, it's really clear on that. So Jesus is the first begotten of the dead. And the prince of the kings of the earth. Unto him that loved us and washed, uh, washed us from our sins in his own blood. 
and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. You'll notice that there's a split right there right quick. Uh, he's saying, one God and somebody else's Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds. Now you'll notice a lot of idiots like divide atheists and I guess a lot of fucking company Christians think that Jesus is going to be riding around on fucking clouds. He comes with clouds. With clouds. What do clouds do? They obscure. A little bit of lightning. They talk about lightning from the east in the book of Matthew. Okay. He comes obscured quietly. Okay, you'll never notice at first. And every eye shall see him, but it doesn't say they see him at that time. And they also which pierced him. Now you have to be careful on that. That's talking about the spear of destiny. Okay. Okay. Now, that's a little bit different deal. I won't go into that. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Kindreds is an odd word to be using in here. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord. Now, this is where you got to look and go, Lord, okay, wait a minute. He was God. Then they put in the word Father, and now they're saying Lord. They're not talking about the same people every time. Okay, I hate to tell you this, because you're having a fight between Rome and everybody else. The They're not Jewish, you get the point. The Hebrews or Israelites, whatever you want to call them at that time, they're, they were trying to make a split. Rome was tired of the Christians. Really simple fucking deal. Or Jesuits. How about that? So they smashed them together to make Christians. You get my point? Nobody exactly was happy about how this turned out. But Rome wanted control, not the truth. That's why she rewrote what she did. All right? Rome's fully aware that I'm not bullshitting. I know Rome knows. Which is and which was and which is to come the Almighty. I, John who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, tough times, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. Now, that's a double title that they're talking about, Jesus Christ. Okay? Remember, we went through this. Jesus was clear. He, he wasn't a Christ. All right? He, he didn't have nothing to do with that. So, John's saying a little bit something else. This is John doing his version. Jesus is a title. Christos is a Messiah title. Okay. Was in the isle that is called Patmos. For the word of God. And for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Now. I'm going to explain something to you. This is a very important little passage right here. You'll laugh. You'll go, duh, duh, important crap, slappy. Well, let's read it again. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Okay? He was saying, he was meditating on the Lord's day. And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Now, this is where the idiots say you got to hear the trumpet. That's not what that says. So you think some fucking idiot's going to run around blowing a trumpet? Let's go back to Corinthians. What does it say? As if a trumpet, right when the trumpet sounds, the horn sounds. What did he just say? And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. A great voice. A booming voice. Words. Remember? Remember what Corinthians is talking about? You can't raise from the dead that which is alive. You have to raise from the dead that which is dead. You have to enlighten that which is dead. And you don't do it running around blowing trumpets, dummy. 
Now, do you? You do it with your voice. <laughs> and you might actually catch Herbert talked about that, and that's why I put that video up over Dune when the Bene Gesserit have the power of what? The voice. Right? Yeah. The weirding. Yeah, I see. Interesting little old timey trick right there. All right. As of a trumpet. Doesn't say it is, but it's booming as like it's a trumpet. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Now remember that the book all of the books in the Bible are a three tier encryption at least, okay? Because they're talking about the fictional man made world and that which actually exists. And so a lot of people get hung up in the fictional version because that's how it was rewritten. Bacon, when he rewrote this, when he redid it, you can definitely tell he left in the book of Matthew for a reason. Okay? All right. I've had some discussions with one or more, uh, yeah, I hope, well, a few people, very few. But the deal is, the book of Matthew is the shiznit. Okay? It's the shiznit. Now, I don't go into the other books. Okay? Because I don't waste my time with them. But Corinthians is very specific. They're telling you what they're, what is going to happen. Because it this repeats. Okay? This is a repetition that never stops. It never stops because there's a bunch of mystery school shit in here from way the fuck back to the Zabai, the Magi, the Zoroastrians, you name it. All right? And that's what makes up this fucking Bible. So, yes, Jesus existed. Jesus Christ existed. That's a title and then a double title. And Emmanuel existed. John existed. Okay? Anyway, uh, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Now, to some people, that'll be, I am, you had to go look at uh, the Egyptian book that I put up, okay, on the law of making and creating, which is, I created the thing. Well, what they're saying is I went out and I named a tree a tree. Since I'm the boss, I am the first and the last. That's in the man-made deal. Okay, but they're not a creator of any tree. Remember that. The proof of that is is you ask them to make a tree and they can't do it. But <laughs> uh, Jesus was the one that could curse a tree and make that bastard dry up. <laughs> right? So... Uh, what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. Unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira. Well, that's a good word. And unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia. Eh? Yeah, Philadelphia. And unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. The voice. Did you did you hear a trump? Did he say? And I turned around and there was this asshole blowing a trumpet right in my ear. No, that's not what he said. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Now this gets in a little bit of metaphor on the churches. You got to remember, John and them were... Jesus was real clear with John and his followers and the Pharisees. They were not on the same page, but they were John and Emmanuel were just fine with each other. They got along just fine because John was cleaning house on the Israel side, and Jesus come along to clean up, I guess what you would call, the people that were really tired of the Pharisees. He was just, as he said, I'm here to knock them out of the box. The ones that are running loose, I'm going to grab, and we'll be fine with it. Okay, the church will come apart. The Jewish, the Judaic church will come apart because it's corrupt. It'll come apart by itself. I'm just here to catch the, the ones that are asking questions. All right, and we'll go hit the road. 
John was doing it a different way. John was going head to head. Okay? Head to head with them. Jesus was too, but in a different way. Okay? All right. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Meaning there look, there was one that looked like Jesus. Clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs, his head and his hairs were white like wool. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And you you go, well, why do people make God always a white dude with white hair and a white beard? Well, that right there, dummy, is why. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. Okay? You get the point? Okay. And he had in his right hand seven stars. And no, we're not talking Roseanne and Captain Kirk and them. And out of his... Though, hey, you got to be careful on that. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. Okay. Words that cut both ways. Right? Ah, there you go. Remember what Jesus said about talking it's not what goes in it's what comes out that defiles a man well it's what comes out that slices through the bullshit fixes a lot of stuff stops many a shyster from operating and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength okay only retarded atheists and some company Christians don't actually read this and damn sure don't understand what it says. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. He scared the shit out of John. <laughs> we went belly down. Or, well, it'd be, he went face down, right? And, uh, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. I think we can know what Corinthians says on that. I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Okay. A lot of people want to... Ex- now, every, there's going to be people that disagree. A lot of people seem to think hell is somewhere else. Instead of right what you're making this place be in. Because you're the degenerate, right? You're the liar and fraud. Like, this ain't hell right here and now. Okay? But a lot of religions attempt to externalize everything so they can keep control over you with the priest class. Oh, you can't take care of it yourself. Come over here. What did Jesus say? No, we'll do it our own self. But you always got churches and you always got religious company religions that flip it on its head saying, no, 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 everything's external. You can't do anything. You have to do it externally. You can't take care of it internally. Okay? Which is <clears throat> absolutely against what Jesus stated. But I usually let that one go. But for the purposes of this, it has to be in context with St. John. Okay? Actually, it's just fucking John. He's not a, That's Romans making him a saint. Okay? That makes the Jews happy. <laughs> All right? So I don't really care. Or not happy. I don't know. Right. Anyway. And he says, and have the keys of hell and of death. Okay. Again, Corinthians. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand. And the seven golden candlesticks, the mystery, talking about encryption, okay, of what he actually means. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Now, a lot of people seem to think angels are going to fly down out of the clouds. It's not going to work that way, all right? 
regardless of where jinn actually exists or not. And I'm not knocking this concept, which is in Islam, if I remember correctly. I'm not knocking the concept. There's some really screwy shit that occurs. All right? So you can kick the pseudoscience of evolution and all that shit out the door. When you get down to brass tacks, it's irrelevant because I do know people that have seen ghosts, though I've never seen one. So on and so forth. Those are trustworthy fucking people that weren't crazy, so... When you get into this area, you got to remember, nobody's got the fucking rule book, but everybody claims the fucking answers. Right? Right. Now, the old timers didn't have a problem with understanding what the fuck exorcism and sin eaters were for. And there's more at play here. But in this day and age, everybody's a fucking moron. They've died. Do you see what Revelations is talking about? And Corinthians. And Jesus. Okay? Now, as he says, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Those will be prophets, men, just regular men, illuminated, enlightened. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches, which the prophets are going to destroy the corporations. You dig? You know, that's what they're saying. Okay. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write. Now, now th listen to what he says. He didn't say angels was flying around in the sky. What did he say? This is supposed to be God speaking, and it's from St. John. You might want to actually read it. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write. Okay, so you don't think it's kind of weird that at this point of time... Nobody else is mentioning superhumans flying through the air with halos around their heads. That's because that's not what Rome did to this. They didn't, they didn't want the truth or the fact getting out. Okay? I'm not against Rome. All right? That's all there is to it. Especially not Pope Francis. They were hiding... And encrypting these texts to keep them away from you because they don't want you doing it. That's the fucking point. In direct violation of what Jesus said. But not in direct violation of what John was saying. Okay, so just relax. It's saying the angel of the church is a dude or a woman. These days it's a little different now. And there's some books missing out of here, right? And John's supposed to write to the angel of Ephesus. These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand. What did he say? Stars represent angels. Angels are men of the church that are prophets. You are to send this to the first prophet of Ephesus. That he has seven prophets in his hand. All right. Who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. And he's supposed to write. He's saying. You write that I am God. And I told you to send a letter to the dude. The prophet of Ephesus that of all the seven churches, there are seven prophets. And they're mine. Okay? Real simple. It's a missive that's that's encrypted. Okay? How about that? All right. I know thy works. And thy labor. And thy patience. And how thou canst not bear them which are evil. Now they're talking about rooting out corruption in the churches. I think we can talk to Martin Luther and a few others about that, right? This never stops and it recycles and repeats. Revelations is not new. It's something that always occurs. It's inevitable. And thou hast tried them which they say which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. What he's talking about now is rooting out 
atheists that you misunderstand devout atheists that or other religions that are infiltrating the new church okay and at this time you kind of got to say the roman version which just happens to coincide with Manes and the Manichaeans and the Magi infiltrating Rome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you, you get the point. All right. There's a little bit of esoteric stuff in here. Most of it's really mundane encryption. Okay. And has born and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. All right. Meaning... You're doing good work. Keep up the good work. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove the candlesticks, or remove the candlestick out of his place, Except thou repent. Okay, now stop. What did he say? Right? So remember, this is God talking to John. The Jewish God talking to John. Okay? And repent and do the first works. See, it's already within John's time. John's talking about the Pharisees. This is talking about the Pharisees. It's so fucked up. That they're trying to root them out and it's not quite working. The corruption. Okay? It's gotten that bad. Kind of like what you're seeing now. Okay? And he's saying, if you don't repent... Now, remember, they're warning the angels. He's warning John to warn the angels of the seven churches the prophets of the seven churches, that if they, they went off track a little bit trying to clean up the corruption, if they don't go back to doing the old school stuff on the street level, right, the basic mechanics, they're getting a little bit too big for the britches, basically. If they don't go back to it, then he will come unto them quickly and will remove thy candlestick. He will remove the church. He's going to take the franchise. You're out. Get the fuck gone. No more charger. Except thou repent. So they got to repent and do what's right. Otherwise, he's going to take the church. Now, you can read along. This is in my King James. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Why did they just say Nicolaitans, which I also hate? <laughs> yeah. Okay. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Satan mean an adversary. Enemy. An enemy religion acting like Jews. Infiltrating and acting like Jews. Okay. And, of course, Jews as a word didn't exist technically until King James. So get the, just get the fuck over it. All right, people. I don't give a shit about Khazarians or none of this other shit. I really don't. I don't care. Because I'm none of those. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Now, he's talking about, okay, the churches have been infiltrated by Nazi other religions acting like theirs. And the naughty devil will do some street sweeps. 
All right. Devil may have been a code word for Rome. Something as simple as that. Rome will do street sweeps. You got to watch out. They'll chunk your ass into prison. You know what I mean? And what did Jesus say about when you're in a town, you got to be careful, and here's how to beat John Law and the magistrates, okay? Uh, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. We call that object examples. That ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. But thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. All right, so some of them they'll chunk, uh, they'll chunk into the pokey for ten days. Okay. Now remember, this repeats. Revelation's just talking about times that constantly repeat. Like I swear, what once every three, four, five generations, right? One, yeah. And it's actually speeding up now between generations. Okay. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that hath overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Now, in this case, it means going underground. You won't suffer if you hide your light. In fact, there's one or two people that know what that means. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos, Pergamos, write, Those things saith he which hath the sharp sword, with two edges. So he's supposed to tell also the church at Paragamos that be careful, these words are encrypted and it has two sides and they cut both ways. Okay? I know thy works and where thou dwellest even where Satan's seat is and thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr who has slain among you where Satan dwelleth okay now they're talking about infiltration operations but I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, which is Baal. Okay. If you read back into the Old Testament, which I promise not to cover, but I'll cover it just five seconds worth, right? Uh, Lord Jealous hopped off of Sinai, Sinai after he signed the contract with the Judaics and went and kicked Baal's ass. Now, he didn't kill Baal. Because Baal ran around for a while later. All right, that's the way that goes. God kings and all that. Uh, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, the corporation, to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. Now they're talking... Very basic stuff. They're talking infiltration of each other's societies and religions, okay? And how it's screwing everybody else up. They each other, right? And how to fix that shit. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate, okay? Repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Really simple. He says, I'm a master fucking propagandist. You keep screwing around with your corruption and I'm going to come in and clean you and your church out. See how that works. Punk. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. M-A-N-N-A. -N -N I'll let you go look that up. You're supposed to be grown up. Knowledge, basically. And we'll give him a white stone. And you'll want, you wonder about Freemasons, right? This is one of the deals in some of the Freemasonry stuff. Now listen close. To him that overcometh, 
overcomes to him that wins. Will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. A secret name. And if I remember rightly, you're supposed to go look for the name of God in one of them rocks. Okay? It's an interesting little conundrum. How about them beans? And under the angel of the church in Thyatira, write these things, saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. So you'll see that James is talking to Emmanuel, Jesus. And Jesus is telling him, when when we're done here, you need to do this everywhere else. Okay? He's telling them, I'm doing it my way, but you need to tell them over there that if they don't clean up their fucking houses, we're going to do it for them. Because they're corrupt, and they're coming apart. I know thy works in charity and service and faith, and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. That would be the Gaia worship. Right? That would be Pan. Oh, Bacchus. There you go. A female Bacchus. They're talking about a different... It's encoded. They're talking about do not allow that stuff to screw up our stuff. They're trying to infiltrate. you got to get it out of here. Okay? All right. So Jezebel may very well have been a prophetess of another... Obviously... I'm going to take it that she is real, and she is a pain in the ass, and she is of a different religion. Okay? And to commit fornication, to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Okay? Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation except they repent of their deeds. Okay? And I will kill her children with death. And in a way, be careful of what that means. That doesn't necessarily mean physically. Some of you get this one. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. Meaning, if you haven't been chasing the other religion, don't worry about it. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he's telling them, okay, since you're the last of the holdouts over there, chill out until I show up. Don't be starting any operations. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him I will give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. The teachings he received from his dad is that you got to rule with an iron rod and bust up the fictions. Okay? And I will give him the morning star, not Lucifer. That might be what somebody else calls Lucifer. But that depends on what you're talking about and who you're talking about it with. What he's saying is, I will give you enlightenment. 
He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the churches. The churches, not anybody else. The churches. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God. Which would be the seven mysteries, I would imagine. And the seven stars, I know they works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art dead. Be watchful, and strengthen the things which remain, that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. That which have, he's talking about, you're, you're screwy. You're not enlightened. You're getting close, I mean, but you're not exactly enlightened. So, remember that I'm keeping an eye on you, and I'm keeping an eye on those people that are ready to die. Meaning, that's it. You know, they're ready to call it quits, give up, and go take the blue pill. Okay. Uh, remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief. And thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, those things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David. Now where does it say he's kin to David? He has the key of David. He that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. So he's going to say, I'm just going to pwn everybody. I'm going to pwn the ones that are posers. Right, and you get to rule. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Now that's when it gets into corruption so bad that everything's coming apart. So... The ones that are holdouts, they get judged too. They just don't get judged and whacked. You dig? Because there's more than one level to this. you got to remember that. Uh, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. 
Let's back that up. And these things saith the Amen. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. The reboot. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Now that is a little bit of an encrypted parable. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door, and knock. If any man hear my voice, and open the door, I will come in to him, and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Okay, now that is Revelation 1 to Revelation 4. Or I'm sorry, 3. And we're getting ready to go into Revelation 4.